this is the Mogawak Shrine Elevator. Like some other shrine parts, it has collision with Link, items, and NPCs, but no collision with the ground, so you can do some fun stuff with it. I'll show you how to steal on version 1.2.1 with invisuggling and recall walking. This process will be largely similar at the beginning to my last glitch stealing video, though I'm also adding some helpful fuse entanglement tips that aren't present on some of the common fuse entanglement tutorials out there. Robuxy Second was the first to steal the elevator in earlier patches, Auk discovered 1.2.1 fuse entanglement and Tommy Invisuggle, and Ergil helped out as well, so huge thanks to all of y'all. For a great intro to like like stick calling and fuse entanglement on 1.2.1, check out Gliz and Suishi's vids here. While it's easy to get the like timing at Hatino, Highland Stable is a better spot for fuse entanglement. Your soft locks can be undone by damaging the breezer wagon while you're locked, which you can achieve by setting up a time bomb before you start entangling. To get more time, use a hover stone like I do here, so that when your batteries run out, it'll fall on the bomb and activate it. If your batteries have too much capacity, attach Zonai devices to waste battery faster so you don't have to wait as long. Island Stable also has an abundance of these little trees which drop tree branches, and each one is another chance to fuse entangle a weapon. Timing fuse entanglements is hell, though Grum3057 posited that as it's exactly 18 frames or 0.6 seconds, you can use a 100 beats per minute metronome and release the ability wheel on one tick and hit your fuse button the next. Now I've got a successful fuse entanglement. I immediately warp away. You shouldn't need to do this, but I'd had an issue where my FE would turn to a normal fuse if I am cold, so I do this to be totally safe. The next step requires cooling again, so I head to Hatino where the timing is easy. If you need to recall, be sure to drop your FE parent and child beforehand to avoid risk of them getting eaten. Once you're cold, drop the FE parent or base, in this case my shield. Then switch to another shield you don't mind losing. Get on a steering stick to uncold. As you can see, the weapon is invisible but the sheath is still there. Now you need to unlock your d-pad so you can fail drop. You should be able to use amiibo chests or get eaten by a like here, but I find the like has worked well for me. It can't be the same like you're linked to, so I walk far away to despawn it. I've tried warping at this stage to reload the like, and I lost my weapon, so I play it safe by moving far away instead. Let the like eat you and chew fully, don't struggle. The like may target either your invisible weapon or your shield. Your invisible weapon is safe, so just keep trying until it eats your shield. The shield might drop smuggle, as shown here, or not. It doesn't matter either way for this process, so don't worry about it. Now go find a flat vertical wall to stand with your back flat against. If you drop smuggled, feel free to swap your shield with the d-pad to undo the drop smuggle. Now attempt to drop your invisible weapon. It'll fail and it'll become visible. We're going to use this weapon to jam open the elevator, so I prefer to have something with a little more heft than a skinny weapon, so I head to Akala Citadel to fuse one of these heavy iron boxes to my weapon. Note that you should not swap your weapon at any time, and you can't unfuse anything once you fuse something to it, as this will replace your FE'd weapon with a fresh duplicate and undo all your work. Now let's head to Mogawak Shrine. Before you enter the shrine, make sure Recall is selected. You can use these objects lying around to prop up the elevator. You can see here I already have a weapon recall locked here from my last attempt. I had placed it too low, so the shrine elevator didn't get freed. You want to carefully look at where the elevator is in its resting position, and make sure that when you place your weapon that it should be clipping both the elevator and the motor underneath in their normal positions. Place the weapon with the Ultra Hand and use recall on it. Before the screen goes gray, load your last autosave. You'll be at the beginning of the shrine. Quickly skip the cutscene and activate Recall, which you should already have set. Target the elevator to freeze it in place so you can approach. Since the elevator has no floor collision, it can easily fall through the floor before you can see where it went. But if you miss grabbing the elevator, you can just reload the same autosave and try again as many times as you need to. The thing you've recall locked will be there until you restart your game. Attach it to some shrine junk and save it to your auto build, and then make sure to add it as your favorite and save so you never lose it. 
The motor and propeller attached to the elevator also fly apart from the locked object, and they remain connected in the shrine. If you attach an apple to both, you can auto-build them outside the shrine as two separate objects, which is neat, but since building on them outside the shrine won't maintain their connection, it's a little useless. Have fun with the new lightweight floaty box, and feel free to use these steps to take a crack at other shrine objects.